So anybody who works in food service, you know it's a job where you have to like put your pride on the back burner or you're gonna have some problems. I work in catering and a few weeks ago I was working a wedding, we do a lot of weddings, and I was doing what I always do, which is serving appetizers and clearing tables. And when you serve, and we do really high end, really fancy weddings. So there's all these unwritten rules to the way that you do everything and the way that you serve appetizers. So I'm following that, you know, this is how you do it. I have my plate. I approach in a non-threatening manner, flat smile. <laughs> and you can't really elbow your way into the conversation. You have to kind of lurk around the edges for a while, you know, until somebody notices you. And usually it's like someone with gray hair finally is like, oh, what do we have here? Now I make my pitch. I'm like a car salesman, like working on commission. I have a date wrapped in bacon, infused with goat cheese with a trace of aioli and some pine nuts. I have to do some selling points too, you know, like it's a job interview, like it's gluten free, but I also have to warn them of the risks. There is nut traces. <laughs> so now it's out there, it's hanging. It's like I've asked them out and they're either gonna accept or reject. There's a moment of tension. It's like, like, it's like they're about to commit to something huge, like getting a tattoo or watching Breaking Bad, you know? They can't decide, they all look at each other. And, and finally, like one of them, one of them will be like, oh, I, I guess. Like so, so she's like, I guess, I guess I'll try one. And then when one, when one goes, they all go. And there's a certain way you have to pick up an appetizer. Okay, it's like, like, this. like plucking like an eyeball with tweezers, like very delicately, you know. Like, and then when you eat it, you have to, you know, act as if it's about to explode at any moment. And I, as a server, I have to act like this is all totally normal behavior. Like I'm on board with this. When in reality, if I were confronted with a plate full of six bacon wrapped dates, I would take the flat of my palm and scoop them all into my bag. <laughs> so there's also clearing, and there's an art to clearing as well. And the thing is, at the beginning of the night, I am a gracious server. But by the end of the night, I have become surly waitress. And here's why. Like, I'm really not a good person to be working in high-end fancy catering events because one whiff of like hoity-toitiness and I just want to fight. So like if I see one monogrammed puff loop, I'm like, you think you're better than me? Come on. So at the start of the night, I really try. Like, you know, I'm pleasant, gracious, what can I get you? I'll spit shine your shoes, whatever you need. And by the end of the night though, I'm tired, my feet hurt, everybody's drunk, and I'm over it. So at the start of the night when I'm clearing, you know, you extract a glass from the table very gently without disturbing anybody's elbow space. You ease it out. You don't bump any of its brothers and sisters that are on the table. But by the end of the night, I'm like a claw in one of those arcade games down the shore, like boom, right in the middle of your conversation. I don't care. <laughs> so I'm working this wedding. It's, it's early waitress time because it's the end of the night. I don't care if I'm inconveniencing or offending any guests because it's the end of the night. And we're clearing, and they're cleaning up everything. So like tables, chairs are packing up. Where I have to clear all the glasses. The event is over, but the guests are still lingering. The bar is closed, so we have to get everything. So I approach this one table. This guy has a martini glass. And I say, not unfriendly, but not too friendly either. Can I take your glass? Ever so coolly, he says, actually, I'm not finished with it yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I've been working with children for 15 years, so I know how to do a stink eye. <laughs> and I look at his girlfriend first, and she's staring at me, so I give her the stink eye. Then I look back at him, and he's looking at me, and I give him the stink eye. Back and forth we go. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and basically, we are now at a power play, because he, this gentleman, is staking claim to his martini glass. And I am not going to let you tell me that I can't take that glass. So I walk away and I come up with a plan. I'm gonna circle the room and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna be ready to fight. So I'm, so I'm circling and I'm coming up with my whole plan. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give him one line of dialogue, one chance, and I know he's not gonna take it and then I'll be ready to go. I'll let us go back and forth two times before I start cursing. And I will put like two fingers on the stem of the glass and I'll put my other hand on the bottom of it and I'll start moving gently and then he'll have to move gently. I'll, I'll have to be in a power stance. I'll have my tray like tucked under my arm and when his girlfriend starts getting involved, what am I gonna do? So I'm getting myself psyched up, I'm ready to go. I have been working up to this all night 
surly waitress, monogrammed cufflinks, martini boy, I'm going to take your glass and you can't tell me that I cannot. So I stride back to the table. The glass is empty on the table and he is walking away. And I always grab his arm because I'm like, I didn't care about the glass, dude. I just wanted to fight. <laughs> That's the way it goes in catering. Thank you.